What's up woodworkers, Ben here, and today I'm gonna to be building a wall hanging bathroom cabinet using basic tools and cheap timber from the local DIY store. Let's get stuck in. So first thing I'm gonna do is check for any cracks or checks or sap coming through the wood. Make sure that I try and avoid that where possible when I'm making my cuts. And now I've done that, I just need to measure out for where I'm gonna make my cuts. I'm using 144 millimeter wide by 18 millimeter thick boards for this project. Because I'm gonna be cutting three long pieces and four short pieces, I went ahead and set up a stop block on my miter saw. I don't have any fancy T-Track stop block system on my miter saw station, so I just take a scrap piece of straight edge wood, in this case, a scrap of plywood, and nail it to my workbench. I can then cut my boards and I know they're exactly the same length. So I've got my shortest board and one of my long boards. I'm gonna run these through. I've set this at five centimeters, 50 millimeters from the fence to the blade. I'm gonna just rip off a couple of strips now. These thin strips will form the rails and styles for my door frame. So I've got two short thin pieces for my door. I've got two long thin pieces for my door. I've got four short wide pieces for my top and bottom and my two shelves. And I've got two long pieces that are wide for my sides. Next up, I'm gonna run a groove down the inside edge of my frame so that I can slot a back piece in. So I've set my router table up with a fence. I don't have a proper fence, I've just made one out of a straight edge that I've got. I put my 12.7 mil bit in, just gives you that little bit extra, and I ran a test piece through. Now you see, I've got two bits on my test piece. First time I did it, I had a nine mil bit in because for some reason I had in my head that I was using nine mil plywood, but I'm not, I'm using 12 mil plywood. So that's a really good example of why you always use a test piece first. I've checked that this fits over my plywood now and it does, it's a good fit. So now I'm gonna run my top piece, my bottom piece and my two side pieces through here to give me the distance piece in the back that I need. And these are what I'm left with. Four panels, each with a matching groove down one edge. So I'm gonna take the long thin pieces that I've done for my door frame, and I'm gonna route out a rebate. Um, I've done a test piece here, and a rebate is essentially just a recess within the edge of the piece of wood. The idea being that I'm gonna do this on the inside edges of my frame, and then some plywood can sit on the back, which will hold as a nice stable platform for my mirror to get glued to. Now here's where I made an error. My plan was to attach all the door frame pieces together and then run the rebate on the inside edge, but I got a bit carried away and ended up routing the pieces individually. This will come back to bite me later on. So I'm gonna be using pocket hole joinery for um, all the assembly of this. On the frame, I'm just gonna be putting two in each end of the top and bottom panel. And then on the door frames, I'm gonna be putting them in the end to join them together as well, I think. Um, and then hopefully it'll all go together nice and smoothly. So let's get started with the top and the bottom panels. I'm using the Craig 720 Pro pocket hole jig here, but I've also built similar projects using the Craig 320 and essentially any pocket hole jig will do. I just did two on the each end of the top and the bottom boards, making sure to keep the grooves on the opposite side to make sure that the pocket holes are on the outside of the cabinet. Next up, I wanna drill some shelf pin holes. I've made sure to get my side pieces with the grooves facing the inside and I've opened them up like a book. This way I can make my marks and ensure that they match all the way across to the other board, meaning that I'll have perfectly level shelves. I didn't need my holes to run all the way to the top and bottom, so I made my first measurement just using the width of one of my boards. I'd like to say that I carefully figured this out, but it just looked about right. It saved me having to bother with measurements. Then I just used my T rule and marked a little way in from the front and the back of each board to where my shelf pins would sit. And finally, I used the same T rule to set the distance between each hole. And I just used the width of the rule as it would give me plenty of options for shelf spacing. As you probably gathered by now, I don't have a shelf pin jig. So I'm doing this the slower way. I think I'll get myself a shelf pin jig at some point as it'll make this a lot easier. But for now, to make sure I drill nice straight holes, I'm just gonna use my pillar drill to drill the holes. It does involve lining up each hole individually, so it's definitely slower than using one of the jigs, but it still gets the job done. Right, so next up, I'm gonna start assembling the frame. So I'm gonna add a pocket hole screw to one of my holes, and I've got this little pocket hole clamp, which is really good just for lining up 
your work pieces and clamping it tight so that hopefully we don't get too much of a twist when we use the pocket holes and tighten them down. So first things first though, I'm gonna add a decent squadge, squadge is a technical term, of wood glue onto the edge of this board. Then it's just a case of taking some time to line it all up with the edge pieces, taking care to have the back grooves lined up perfectly so that I can clamp it and screw in the pocket hole screws. So this is where I'm up to at the minute. I've got the base on, I've got the sides on. I need to make the piece of plywood that's gonna slot into these grooves to form the back panel, which is this piece of plywood right here. So I always like to do that after I've made it, just in case I make any changes along the way, but I haven't this time. So I've got this measurement here, which is 514. Yeah, 514 millimeters. These little grooves, which I need to take into account for, obviously, are eight milli millimeters each. So 514 plus eight plus eight equals 530. So all I need to do now is set my table saw fence to 530 millimeters from the blade, from the inside of the blade, to make sure that I account for the kerf which is the thickness of the blade cutting through, and then run my plywood through, and then I'll have my width, and then I just need to measure my height. I'm using 12 millimeter plywood for this, which might be a bit overkill, but as I'm hanging it with a French cleat style hanger, then I wanted the back to be plenty strong. Once it was cut, I could slot it into my cabinet all the way to the end, and then I can mark the exact height of the cabinet. I like to do this where possible, because it minimizes the opportunities for mistakes when I'm working out the measurements. That being said, I still needed to take off the measurement of the remaining wood after my groove in the top panel, just to make sure it all fits properly. Then I just trim this piece off on the table saw. After a quick test fit, I confirmed that it fits perfectly and attach the top. By the way, it's really easy when building a project like this to get carried away and assemble the entire carcass before doing the back panel, which I very nearly did which would have meant that it needed disassembly so that the back panel could be slotted in, which wouldn't have been fun. So that's my carcass done. So next I'm just gonna fill in these little shelf pins that I got off Amazon for about three quid for a pack of 20. And then I can test my shelf. Cool. So now all I need to do is make a measurement on the front where I think roughly it needs to be. I'm gonna recess it back just ever so slightly so that it's not touching on the door when the door shuts. Um, but I'll only do that by a couple of millimeters. Just eyeball it and then make the cut on the table saw. Now, you could argue that if I'd drawn up meticulous plans for this ahead of time, then I could have cut all the boards to their exact width and lengths all in one go. But frankly, I prefer working like this and figuring things out as you go. And I believe you can learn a lot more doing it this way. And in all honesty, the amount of time it would take to draw out the plans and check the measurements, it'd probably take just as long overall. So I'm gonna cut the back piece, which is the French cleat. That's what's gonna hang the unit to the wall. So to do that, I've got a spare piece of the wood that I've been using, and I'm gonna cut it to size so that it's recessed in a little bit on both edges, just to give me a little play where I wanna hang it. Um, so I'm just gonna mark that out now, just very roughly and then I'll cut that down on the mitre saw. Next up, I'm gonna cut a 45 degree angle across the length of this board so that I can hang it on the wall with the French cleat system. So I've set my table saw blade up to 45 degrees. I've set my fence up to roughly halfway through the board to give enough edge on both sides so that I can hang it on either side of the cabinet and on the wall. And now I'm gonna just run it through. Now I tend to get a little bit of a leftover bit from the blade on here, so I'm just going to use a block plane to clean the rest of that off. So here's my two pieces, and these go, one goes on the wall facing with the angle facing towards the wall, the other piece goes on the back of the unit with the angle facing the opposite way, and then simply hook the piece onto the wall like this. 
I'm going to cut another piece, just a block to go along the bottom here. I might just, because I've got a scrap left, I'll probably cut just a couple of small pieces to go on. That just means that it's an even space against the wall all the way through. And I've made sure that the overhang at the outside is just proud with this French cleat rather than the other way around, because if I did it so that the French cleat was sunk in too far, then the edge of the unit would be touching the wall and therefore the French cleat wouldn't work. So that's just something to bear in mind when you're doing this. So I cut some strips of spare wood that I had. I didn't have a piece long enough, so I've just cut a couple of bits off. Um, and then I'm just gonna slot them in and pre-drill and counter six some holes from the front, I think, because there's more meat to bite into in these pieces of 18 mil at the back than there is of the nine, 12 mil of the 12 mil plywood that I've got on the back here. So I'm gonna screw in from the back and then when it's actually hung on the wall, I am gonna screw in from there anyway, but these ones I'll probably fill before I paint so that there's not loads of screw holes all over the place. I finally got myself some of the Trend Snappy brand countersinking drill bits that people have been commenting about and they're a game changer for me. I'll put a link to the set I use to drill the holes for these screws in the video description because if you don't already have some, then you should definitely get yourself a set. <laughs> so here's a piece of advice for you. Um, take your own advice. My thoughts were I was gonna run this rebate on the long pieces and stop so I have plenty of meat to go into when I run my pocket hole screws in for my door frame. However, I got a little bit carried away and ran it all the way through end to end. Now it won't get seen too much because it's at the top and the bottom of the uh, panel but running a pocket hole screw through this means that it's going to be biting into a little bit of wood before it hits the main thickness of the wood um, hopefully should be okay but don't do that leave some space at the end for your pocket hole screws to go into and also it'll look neater on the end so i'm going to use my 10 minute workshop square thanks peter then i'm going to make sure that everything is sitting square as i can on this then I'm going to apply some glue and some pocket hole screws. Right. Let's see how well this holds up. So it's chipped through quite a bit. You can see the screw, but actually that's solid. It'll only get more strong as the glue dries. By the time I put the back panel in as well, I don't think I need to worry about that too much, to be honest. Let's get it all built. So I just set it up all the same way as at the first corner and these corner clamping squares make life so much easier when getting everything lined up. I also use my Craig face clamp to keep the pieces nice and flat against my workbench while screwing in the pocket holes. You can see here a bit of a better angle that shows the screws going in and it's definitely less than ideal. I considered just scrapping these pieces and starting again but based on how strong that first joint felt and the fact that it's all going to be braced with the panel I decided to just run with it. I might come back and do something about all those ugly gaps though. Then I cut my panel to size on the table saw. Right, now I just need to run a bead of glue down this inside edge, spreading it nice and liberally all the way around so that I can pop my plywood panel in. Here we go. There we go. Happy days. Just needs a bit of tidying up. We have our door. While the panel was drying, I decided to fill those gaps in the door frame with some strips of plywood. So I just slapped some glue in and clamped the plywood into the gap. And I came back once they dried and cut them down with a flush trim saw. So this is now out of clamps, uh, left it overnight to fully dry. And before I start attaching the hinges, I'm just gonna test the mirror. And it's about a quarter of a millimeter off. 
Um, the frame just seems to be slightly too small for it. Now, I don't know whether that's down to the moisture in the air because we've had a lot of thunderstorms um, today and last night, or more likely it's down to me just being ever so slightly out on my measurements. Uh, woodworking is all about problem solving. So um, I wanted to make sure that you see some of the problems that get solved on this project. Um, the end result will still be great, um, and only you and I will know what's actually happened on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Stanley knife blade. I'm just going to run this along the bottom here to mark where I'm overlapping. And then I'm going to get my chisel here. And I'm just going to chisel away that tiny little bit so that the mirror fits perfectly. So I did all that and now the mirror fits perfectly. So I've got myself some concealed hinges, soft close ones. They're only about four quid to buy a pair of these and these are really good ones. There's no point getting dirt cheap ones because they're so cheap anyway. And I've got this weird little hinge jig thing. This one isn't the best, but it is cheap and it gets you started. I'll put a link to this in the description if you're interested, but there are better ones out there, so you might be better off spending a few extra quid and buying one. But essentially all I need to do is mark everything out for my hinges on the unit and on the door, and then drill my holes and fit the hinges. I marked out the distance from the bottom and the top of the door that I wanted my hinges to be, and then lined everything up and transferred that mark across to the carcass as well. Then I take my hinge jig and mark out where the holes will go. These are cut with a forstner bit and a depth stop to make sure I don't blow through my door. Once I've got the hinges in place, I used the jig to transfer my measurements onto the carcass and drilled the holes for the mounting plates. The hinges then just clip into place. The half L hinges are really good as they have plenty of adjustment both up and down as well as in and out. Ooh, God, I love that soft close action. So I got myself uh, one of the pocket hole plug cutter things for the Craig 720. Comes with a plug cutter hole. Um, and then it's got a thicker one, but I'm not quite sure what that's for because the plug cutter that comes with doesn't fit. So unless they do a bigger one, I don't know. Um, but it comes with this bad boy, which is the plug cutter itself. I've used a few different types of plug cutters in the past and they've been a bit crap, to be honest. So I'm really interested to see what this one's like. So I've had a little play with it before and essentially you just take out your pocket hole thing. These are all very technical terms. And then you clip in the plug cutter you pop in your timber lock it off as you would normally lock your drill down Woo. that was easy that's very sharp hmm. What a messy looking plug though, you can see that. So that's my plug, these were from my pocket holes before. That is my plug. And it's really messy at the top, which is the end that was gonna go into the, into the wood. Right, so I've read the instructions and it actually says you need a slow feed rate to get it to work. So. Although it cuts really quickly and aggressively, it needs to go in slowly. So if we check this out. Yeah, so they're coming out much tidier now. They're the two that I've just drilled a load better. Right, so it tells you in this that I then need to draw a line and cut at a 15 degree angle to get all these off. Seems like a lot of effort. I'm gonna poke out with a screwdriver and see what happens. Well, that worked. <laughs> Very easily. 
And then I didn't fanny around trying to set up a saw for that. Ooh, this is fun. I'm enjoying this. Look at that. That is neat. I like that. Let's see how well it fits. Oh, that's going to be nice and snug. Get some glue in there before I put them in. I think I may have got a bit carried away with the glue, but they fit in really well. So next I just needed to give it all a good sanding and ran through the grits up to 120. So I've got this knotting solution. I'm going to run it over all the knots prior to painting because if you don't, sometimes you'll find that knots will leak through the paint and ruin your paintwork further down the line once you've had it up for a few weeks. So it's worth doing this pre-treatment now and then it's covered. Once that had dried, I painted the unit and all the components with a white bathroom appropriate paint using my DIY spray booth setup. I've got this Gorilla brand Max Strength Grab Adhesive in crystal clear. So I'm going to use this for it. It says it's 100% waterproof, works on glass, bathrooms, that kind of thing. So it should be fine. And it's got a 30 minute working time. So hopefully plenty of time for me to get everything in and sorted correctly. So first thing I need to do is just make sure there's no dust or anything that's settled on this. And then I've got a check this so the mirror the mirror needs some a bit of plastic peeling off the back so i'll do that before i stick it on first things first i'm just going to add some of this on i laid out the adhesive in rows and i felt like i could have done them a bit thicker but i was a bit concerned i'd end up laying it on too thick i just pressed it all down and left it to go off Next up, I needed to fit a doorknob, and I picked up a simple one from B&Q, but I think I might need to come and change it at some point because I think it's a bit too small for the cabinet. Anyway, I went ahead and drilled the hole so that I could attach it. So what I've done here is I've put the other end of my French cleat up. I've used some screws that were already there because there was a cupboard there, if you can't already tell from my amazing paint job. Um, so I've used those screws just to hang it onto. I know it's central, then it works okay. Then it's just a case of hooking the other side of the French cleat onto this one. Then you can adjust it side to side as you need to to get it level. Happy days. Now all I need to do is screw in through those joining plates just to make sure that it doesn't come off because it can pull um, and then I'm going to attach the doors and we'll call it done. I made sure to screw into the French cleat and wall just to really secure it all in. This is a bit of a belt and braces approach but that door with the mirror on is pretty heavy so I want it to be more secure. Now that's the unit on, now to fit the door which is just a case of clicking these hinges back in place and we should be good to go. Right, on to the next project.